Right, let's go back to our slides. And this is what we start with. Our first real topic of the day is the manufacturing of insulin. Now, you must remember that um, diabetics need insulin to live. You cannot survive without insulin. Apart from the fact that insulin converts glucose in your blood into glycogen to be stored so that you don't have too much sugar in your blood, insulin also makes um, sugar available to your cells. Glucose can enter your cells for cellular respiration only when you have sufficient insulin. Now, as you have not enough insulin, as you have diabetes, and you know, in the frue time, you have insulin from farke and beasts. Now, can you think, naturally, by means of beswaren? Behalve that it naturally then ook nie menselike insulin is nie, en in soms nieuwe effecten gehad het, en slechte nieuwe effecten, mense is allergies daarvoor gewees, en het het baie keer nie vir hulle gewerk nie. Kan julle natuurlijk dink aan die godsdienstige en geloofsbeswaren wat sommige mense het. You can imagine that if somebody uh, for religious purposes, pigs and pork, the meat of the pig, the pork, is totally taboo, can you imagine how difficult it must be if they have to think that they get their insulin from a pig or even from cattle. Some people don't touch red meat. And apart from that, some people simply don't like the idea of getting animal insulin. But that's what they must do. There was no other method. Genetische ja, en, en ek denk wat ook hier belangrijk is, is Lorraine, is dat baie mense is allergies vir, mm. vir, vir ander insulin behalve menselijke mm. insulin. Mm. En, en daarom moes hulle een ander uitleg vind. Ernstige vind. neve effecte ja. vir sommige mense gehad. Sommige mense het, het selfs gesterf omdat die dieren insulin nie vir hulle gewerk het nie. En toe, soos ek gesê het, kom daar die genetische reductie van insulin. Kom ons kyk hoe dit gewerk. Goed, um, ons leen net weer klem daar op, ne? onthou, die is paar Afrikaanse terme, so kyk een bykie daarna. Goed, now the steps in insulin production are very important. Remember, you have the website, you can get this slideshow printed as a handout for you to help you to study. Nou die eerste ding wat jullie moet onthou, is dat hulle moes eers die menselijke gen wat insulin produceer op die DNA moes hulle isoleer. En daarna moes hierdie gen uitgehaal word, so dat dit gebruik kon word in genetische manipulatie. In other words, the first, first thing that was necessary was that they had to know where was the gene situated, the locus, as we say, of the gene for insulin production and then to isolate it and to take it out. And they also had to get a plasmid from a bacterium. Now, mense, a bacterium, daar het hulle het nou uitgehaal, a bacterium het ook DNA, en die DNA lyk nie soos ons in, in a dubbele helix vorm en in chromosome nie, die DNA van a bacterie um, is korrelrig of dikwels in die vorm van a plasmid. As ons so'n cirkel DNA het, is dit a plasmid, Denk jy, sal onthoud toe ons gepraat het in een stadium met ons gesê dat mitochondria ook van hierdie plasmid DNA bevat. When we talked about DNA, we said about the mitochondrial DNA that you get from your mother is also in the form of a plasmid, remember? Now here we are with a plasmid again. Let's get our slide. So they had to get two things. They had to extract the gene, the human insulin gene from human DNA and they had to get the plasmid from the bacteria. Goed. Nou wat hulle dan doen is om die plasmid op te snij. Daar is die plasmid DNA. Snij dit op. En om die menselijke DNA in stukjes te snij. En hoe word dit gedoen? Dit word gedoen met een restrictie enzym. So the restriction enzyme is used to cut open the plasmid and to cut the DNA into fragments. Now, it's not working like a pair of scissors, and it's quite ingenious. What happens is that the restriction enzyme can recognize a certain sequence of bases on the DNA. So, kom ons kyk weer. So, nou nou vir julle wees. Goed, hierso. 
um, die restrictie enzym sal bijvoorbeeld die combinatie AATT, sommer as jy dit kyk op die preenkies, hierdie rooi geel, geel rooi, sal dit herken. En ooral waar hierdie combinatie tegenkom het, sal daar die enzym dwars deersnui, dwars deersnui. Ne? So dit is dan hoe die restrictie enzym werk. Nou goed, wat gebeur? Daar is jou plasmiet, daar is jou DNA. The plasmid is, mis, the plasmid is cut, knoop my tong dan nou, en ook die menselijke DNA is gesnui. Daar die gedeelte, kom ons sê nou maar hier die gedeelte, is daar waar die geen vir menselijke insulin gelee is. Dan word dit nou ingeplant daar waar die opening in die plasmid is. Ok, so what's happening here, there you've got the plasmid, it was cut open. Those ends are called sticky ends. And the human DNA, the human gene is now inserted into the plasmid. And it touches there where the sticky ends are. And the binding, the connection, one can almost say the gluing of the foreign DNA into the plasmid. And now, Ja, ons menselike DNA is moest nou vreemd vir die plasmid. Wat die plak wil ek amper sê, vandaar die DNA, word gedoen dier een ander enzym met die naam ligase. So you've got two enzymes. Restriction enzyme for the cutting, ligase for the binding. En dan het jy moest nou nieuwe DNA. Bestaan uit die plasmid van die bakterie, plus die mens geen. En ons noem dit dan, Recombinante DNA. Recombinant DNA is where you have new DNA. Goed, daar sien jylle nou die plasmid DNA met die menselike DNA. Goed, so die enzyme ligase binds DNA to the sticky ends of the plasmid. 